I am from Chittagong, Bangladesh. Chattogram. I'd like to know, I'd like to ask about the contributions so far of the whole Bengali people from the period of the time period of the epic Itihasa, such as Ramayana and Mahabharata until the present day. It saddens me now to read about my own culture from so-called history textbooks referred to us in the school, where they speak very less about Bengal. Also, I would like to ask uh, how effective it will be to install a new mandatory law for the foreigners to learn our national language first, starting from Sanskrit, of course whenever they intend to come to any countries in the Indian subcontinent. Uh, because I'm asking because we have this unfortunate status right now where people must speak English for them to understand. And also, I believe language plays a big role in our identity and our address as a nation. For example, Punjabi, Marathi, Bengali, Tamil, French, German, etc. They are known from respective places for the mother tongue they speak. Okay, right. My thoughts. So first of all, let's speak about the, the people of Bengal. So uh, Bengal is, is a wonderful place. It's got this incredibly rich, wonderful history that, that dates back to the beginning of India itself, right? Bengal is not some separate place in the Bengal, it's some separate people. It's never been that way, right? So we know where Bengal is. Do I have to put it in the map? Let's do it in case. <laughs> All right. We know where Bengal is, you know. Uh, Beng Bengal has been partitioned into India and East Pakistan. That was then. It all went happened with the partition in the early 20th century by one of the English guys. Curzon, was it? Whoever it was. And then today we have Bangladesh and, and uh, West Bengal. But this entire region was once called Vanga or Anga. So once we had the kingdom of Anga, which was ruled by the Kuru dynasty, the Anga Mahajanapada. And the people of this Mahajanapada, the great republic, we have to call the Angayas, right? And the Mahajanapada era uh, dates back to the late Vedic era itself, right? The Vedic era is many thousands of years old. So we had the great Anga Mahajanapada, right? Then we had various kingdoms uh, in this region, kingdoms like uh, Suhma, Suhma kingdom of the late Vedic period. We had uh, the Pundra kingdom of the Mahabharata era, Pundra Vardhana, yeah, which uh, lasted all the way to the Mauryan times. Uh, the infamous incident of uh, King of Emperor Ashok executing, ordering the execution of eighteen thousand Ajivikas happened in Pundra, right? Then obviously we 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 have the Vanga kingdom which is mentioned in the Mahabharata in the, in the Ramayan uh, in the Arthashastra of Chanakya as well yeah so you can see the oldest period is the Ram, is the Vedic period then you have the Ramayan period then then I would say the Mahajanapada's period then the which would have included the Mahabharata more or less and then we have the Mauryan era in the modern era right so the Vanga kingdom is mentioned in the Ramayan in the Mahabharata in the Arthashastra the Anga kingdom is mentioned is one of was one of the great Mahajanapadas so you can see how ancient the history is right so um, uh, then you this region was from various uh, in during various uh, time periods part of the uh, mauryan empire part of the gupta empire then you had the great gauda kingdom right gauda kingdom from about, from roughly the 3rd from the 4th century ad to the middle of the 7th century ad yeah uh, the last king was the great king shashank who died in the middle of the 7th century ad or so and then there was a period of about a century of complete anarchy and chaos. Matsyanyaya, that's what it was called. And then you had the advent of the Pala Empire. The founder was Gopala I, who was democratically elected by the people to put an end to the Matsyanyaya, to the chaos and anarchy. And the TV people themselves elected this guy democratically as the king of the, of, of the Vanga region, Gopala. And he was the founder of the Pal Empire from the middle of the 8th century AD. And it lasted for about uh, maybe 400 years, roughly, that sort of thing. So that's the kind of history this region has had. It's always been the history of Bengal is intrinsically related to the entire history of the entirety of India. It dates back to the Vedic times, the Ramayan times, the Mahabharata times, the Mahajanapada era, the Mauryan era, the... the um, the Mauryan Empire, the Gupta Empire, then you had uh, all that. So it, it's it's a very rich, beautiful history. It was it it historically was one of the most rich, the, one of the most prosperous, one of the richest, and fertile and abundant regions of India. Beautiful culture, excellent education. The great Vikramashila Mahavihar or or uh, universe, the great Vikramashila University is in Bengal. It's ruined, sir, in Bengal. Everything is ruined now. Yeah, it's not in present day Bangladesh. Bangladesh, if I'm not mistaken. Beautiful history, very rich history. And then you had the you had the destruction of Nalanda and the Turkic conquest of the region. Yeah, 
and then things go south and today we have bangladesh and west bengal and let's let's uh, end it there <laughs> so uh, what's the other question yeah the question is how effective would it be to install a new mandatory law for foreigners to learn our national language starting with sanskrit for countries in the indian subcontinent i don't think pakistan would ever agree to making sanskrit the mandatory language <laughs> i don't think afghanistan would make it would 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 uh, ever agree to that i am not sure even bangladesh would agree to that i am not sure even west bengal would agree to sanskrit that's the problem that's the problem that's the unfortunate status we that we have right now we are so deeply divided within within ourselves even within india we are so divided but eventually this has to happen we need to have a single unifying civilization language which is the and the only one that is, that can fit the bill is sanskrit it's the oldest language it is also an extremely adaptable language and a very scientific and modern language yeah so uh, yeah that needs to happen eventually but bengal is a wonderful place beautiful incredibly rich and complex history and it's kind of sad to, to see the direction it went in in the past 1000 years which is something that happened to the entirety of india the the millennium of humiliation 